up everybody? Donald from Project K here again for another fun and easy DIY. Um, today we're going to be taking the fog lights off of a 2003 Mitsubishi Eclipse and we're going to be attempting to go for the JDM look and we're actually going to tint the taillight yellow um, using really only five products. You're going to need a rag, you're going to need a product by Krylon called stained glass. We're using the yellow to get the JDM look. They also have other colors available like reds and blues and different things like that, but again, we're using the yellow. Uh, there's a clear coat by U-Pole called Clear Number One. We're gonna use this at the end. It's gonna give it a little gloss. It's gonna add some added protection uh, to the housing, uh, but definitely not a necessary step, just one that we're doing. Um, also, some isopropyl alcohol, wax and grease remover works just fine as well, and some 220 grit sandpaper. Fog lights that we're going to be doing off this Eclipse are actually a glass housing, which is why we're using the glass spray uh, to be honest, I have no idea if it works on plastic. I would imagine it would work the same, uh, but I've never done it. Uh, for this process, these are glass. That's what we're using. All right, so here we are with our housings. Um, the very first process that we're going to do is we're actually going to use the isopropyl alcohol. We're going to clean off the surface. That's going to protect it from the sanding process. When we sand, if there's any dirt or debris, we can actually kind of rub that into the finish. Um, so this will prevent that from happening. It just removes anything kind of big and loose and so, Just a little bit of alcohol. You can use your rag, wipe it off Just enough you're gonna remove all the contaminants any grease or tar or dirt or grime All right, so the next step we're gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm very specific with the 220 in this case because that's actually the recommended grit according to the can. Uh, if we take time to read the directions, which a lot of us rarely do, uh, it says sand, glossy, or rough surfaces with 220 grit sandpaper. So that's what we're going to do. See how it turns out. For this, I just have some that I would normally use with DA I had laying around. Um, I'm just going to take it. And... Now it's glass, so it's not going to sand like plastic or just looks a little different. It takes a lot longer to kind of scuff it up. So I'm just going to go around the entire housing here. If you look, it's got, I don't know if you can see that, it's got some um, some light scuffing on it. Nothing real extreme. It's not like sanding paint or clear coat, but um, it's just going to provide a surface for the, uh, the paint to adhere to. It kind of creates little teeth in the surface. So now, we're actually going to take it again and we're going to clean it off with our isopropyl alcohol one more time. Just kind of cleans off all the dust. Get rag. Clean it off. Oh. So there's actually six things you need. Uh, you need some blue tape here too. Um, you want to take that and you're going to want to tape off so you don't actually spray the yellow all over the housing. Uh, for some of you this may not be important, you just might be okay with spraying it. But for those who don't want to get it all over the place, take some blue tape and just cover it up. And here's another thing that I would recommend is actually taking the housing and actually taping that off right there. Um, if you don't do that, some of the overspray can go over, go in, and it'll actually stick to the inside of the housing. It's real foggy, it doesn't look good. Unfortunately, I know this from personal experience, so it can happen. So now every time I do a project like this, take a little bit and cover the back. That'll protect that overspray from going in. All right, on to the second one.
Okay, so now I have that done. Now that I've rehandled it, I have, uh, I could have transferred some of the grease from my hands onto the glass, so I'm going to spray it down one more time, just lightly, if we have any grease or anything that would prevent the paint from sticking. All right, so that's the prep process. So we've got it all masked off. So when we spray, it won't get all over the housing. Again, we've got the back covered. It'll keep any overspray from going up in the housing and getting inside the lens. All right, now time for the fun part, the spraying part. Um, so again, we're gonna take our Krylon glass color stain. Um, and looking at the directions again, it says to shake for two minutes. Uh, so we're gonna actually follow the directions. Shake for two minutes. We're actually going to uh, start applying it. Now we're, we're just gonna apply it in light mist coats. Um, I think that the look we're looking for is gonna be two coats, uh, but we'll figure out. It might be three. We'll look at it as we go along. When you're spraying though, you notice I have them kind of far apart. You wanna give yourself enough room uh, because on the side here, you look, there's that, that edge there and you actually wanna be sure if you just spray it from the top, you won't cover the edge. When the light comes on, you're gonna see kind of like a halo around here, around the edges here. And uh, we wanna prevent that. So we're actually gonna give ourselves enough room. We can spray along the sides real nice, real even. And then we'll go over the top. Again, this first one's gonna be kind of a mist coat and we'll kind of mist it on until we get how much we want. Put it on nice and even. Yeah, and this is the first coat, so it doesn't have to be perfect. The goal is just to get product on there. All right, so the first coat. We're going to uh, let that dry for about 10 to 15 minutes, then uh, we'll move on and do the second coat. All right, so you can see after one coat, it's starting to get some nice look. It's still uh, transparent, but it's got a slight tint to it. All right, now we're going to put on coat number two. Uh, this one I'm going to spray a little bit heavier than the first one um, and we'll see how it looks after this. Alright, so that's all on there. Starting to settle down. Um, we will uh, let this dry and take a look at it after it's all dry. Okay, so one thing that uh, we're noticing as it's drying, if you look at it, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's kind of foggy, kind of hazy. Um, that's still the chemicals in there. So if that happens to you, I wouldn't worry. Give it some time to kind of evaporate, let all the solvents evaporate, and that should clear up. And uh, we'll show you a shot after it's dried for a little while to show you the difference. All right, it's been about 15 minutes and all of the cloudiness has disappeared. Come down here, we're gonna show you again. If you look, all of those solvents have evaporated there. It's literally no cloudiness at all. It is perfectly transparent. Um, so again, if you run into that cloudiness, don't freak out. Um, the cloudiness will go away. All right, so we're uh, done with coat number two. Uh, the yellow is looking good. We want it a little more yellow, so we are going to go for a third coat. Um, again, that should be the, uh, the look we're looking for. We'll see. All right, there's coat number three. We're gonna let that dry and level out and take a look at the color. And if we like it, we will uh, start to clear coat. Yep. 
Okay, so after three coats, uh, we've achieved the color we wanted. As you can see, it's still translucent. It's got that JDM yellow look. As it is, they look glossy, uh, the, the color we want. We're going to actually go ahead and apply two coats of clear coat over it. Uh, just like in a car finish, the clear coat will add some more gloss to it. It will also protect it uh, from you know, getting scratched or scraped or fogged up or anything like that. It'll help keep them looking nice. So the product I'm using um, is one by Upol called Clear Number no. 1. Um, ideally you would use a two-part clear coat like you would put on a vehicle finish uh, but for the guys who do this stuff in the garage that requires an air compressor and you have to get reducers and clear coat for the spray can world this is just about as good as you're gonna get um, so do the same thing we're gonna spray around and apply two coats we're gonna apply the first coat now And again, you're going to kind of notice the same thing that we saw with the yellowers. You're going to see some fogginess, some haziness in there, but give it time. And as the solvents evaporate, um, that haziness is going to go away. All right, so we got uh, one coat of clear on there. We're going to spray our second and last coat of clear. Let dry about 15, 20 minutes. And uh, we'll untape it, reinstall them, show you the finished product. And uh, I'll wrap it up for this uh, installation. All right, let that dry and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, it's uh, it's been about an hour. We've got two full coats of clear coat on the fog lights, and uh, we're ready to unmask it, put it back on the car. Um, they're safe to handle. If you're not sure whether they're safe to handle or not, you can always you know, some clear coat sprays around here. You can always kind of take your finger and press it in. If you can press it without leaving a fingerprint, um, it's a good uh, indication that, it, that it's safe to handle. So same with around here, if you can press this without leaving any sort of fingerprints or anything. I still wouldn't, you know, scuff it or scratch it or put your hand on, you know, the actual lens itself. Um, that's still going to be, um, you know, kind of soft for the next day or so. Um, but it's safe to unmask, kind of take a look at it. All right, looking at the lights, they look really good. Um, clear coat came out perfect. Kind of hard to tell, but everything, the, the tint is good, color is good. You know, if I can make one change, where the direction said to use 220 grit sandpaper, uh, I would probably just use like a red or a gray scotch Bright pad instead, um, where the uh, sandpaper kind of gouged into the glass, there's still some light. I mean, you can't really see the scratches unless you're absolutely staring at it up close. And they're fog lights, so they're going to get bugs and get abused anyways. But um, if you're looking for perfection, uh, the 220 sandpaper might be a little too rough.